entity has been ready for growth even when pocket areas were not quite ready for that growth. Since I want to speak from the area I know, I'm going to focus the fourth period from the perspective of rapier. It encompasses many other things, but I only want to talk about what I know. That way I don't look like an idiot. Okay, maybe I will anyway. I'm going to focus on the fourth period from the perspective of rapier and reflect on the growth of the society through this thriving culture. May 1966, the birth of the SCA. The very first SCA tournament was fought using modern fencing rules and equipment. But this is not the start of rapier. It is the start of the SCA. A blurry vision of historical society based on chivalry defined by the 60s ideas of love and peace. But it wouldn't take long for this blurry vision to become a culture. Rules to form around that culture and formal recognition to follow. All in all, to create a sustainable society, the SCA. This larger pattern of growth in the SCA, idea to culture, culture to rules, rules to recognition, happens on a smaller scale as well. It is the same pattern for growth in any sustainable culture, and it is the same pattern of growth in any sustainable culture in the SCA, including rapier. Right So let's look at a little history. Going from the birth of the SCA to the birth of rapier within the society, rapier in the 60s and 70s began more as a growth of culture than officially recognized activity. In the decade after the founding of the society, 1966 to 1977, yes, it's 11 years, most kingdoms, all but the mid-realm as a matter of fact, had noticed rapier growing and had made rules to officially recognize it. Aidenville, the West, the East, and the Principality of Anstura had all begun to grow rapier. Thus, three of the four existing kingdoms at the time, plus the only principality, had a growing working culture and rules. Two years later, 1979, you would see the bought approval of society-wide rapier rules and the first white scarf made in the now kingdom of Anstura. Rapier culture had grown and become a major part of the SCA. The growth of the culture was followed by rules and then an award structure, all to create a sustainable culture within the SCA. It would seem that the, as the SCA grew, so would all of its activities. However, the rapier community, like others, has also seen areas of slow development and setbacks, along with an overall trend of growth. For example, while Aunt Sior went from culture to rules to an award structure in one year, it took the Middle Kingdom 19 years and a letter writing campaign from out of kingdom transplants to get the existing culture recognized. Commenteers started a program, looked at it, and then actually had its crown banned. We have seen trouble in Meridiae's, and Atlantia's rapier program started, stopped, and started again. But these are actually the exceptions, rather than the rule. Each time interest has started, a culture has grown and has been followed by both rules and an award structure, it has stayed and thrived. Several kingdoms, Outlands, Elthamark, Aidenveld, Onsiora, Kai, Norshield, Glenavon, also Drakenvall, although they do it differently, has seen this process go uninterrupted as the rapier community grew and became a sustaining part of their kingdoms. And actually, I poke fun, but Midrealm is a great example. While it was slow to develop its rapier program, once it actually created an award structure, the Cavendish Knot was your first one, and you actually had Cav Knot recipients before you even had rules, the community flourished. A year later, Midrealm created its own rapier rules and saw the order of the bronze ring. From that time on, rapier has been a sustaining presence in that kingdom, this one, and Midrealm has been an influential presence in the SCA from a kingdom that took 19 years. In case you got it right, it took a little time. The proven recipe for success in SCA communities is that if the community has rules, if the community has culture, followed by rules and a sustaining award structure, it will grow and flourish and stay, and it will become an integral supporting part of the SCA as a whole. So why a fourth period? That's a lot of words to get back to that, huh? So why a fourth period? Don't we have enough recognition for rapier already? I want to quote somebody here. I love this quote. When a community within <coughs> society grows to the point that they begin to regularly create through the skills they teach and the virtues they promote, peer level people, and when that community also becomes a key part of the SCA as a whole, 
then the leadership of the society at large has a responsibility to create a peer level order to recognize that and to continue the cultivation and sustainability of that part of the society. Opening this talk, I told you there are three hot topics in the SCA. Fourth period, fiscal stability, and lawsuits. But while I've been focusing on the fourth period, I want to speak about one of the other topics. Fiscal responsibility. Stability. Fiscal stability. Right now, the SCA is facing its very first budget issues. Anybody else know that? You don't read it. It's losing money on its yearly budget and having to use its savings to pay its bills. This crisis is coming from outside economic pressures, forcing members to choose whether they wish to stay or leave. Sustainability of a culture and the idea of fiscal stability go hand in hand. The populace, through memberships, kingdom newsletters, and donations, create positive cash flow in. So obviously, the larger and more sustainable the populace, the larger the immediate cash flow. With a culture and population as complex and diverse as the SCA, it becomes a necessity to help each healthy culture within the game to flourish. Right or wrong, every culture is dependent on the others in many ways, one of which is fiscal stability. So the growth of one community strengthens and grows the game for all. Fiscal stability is only one example of this. I do not mean to argue that we should support the fourth period because it's the right thing to do. Or that it's the financially prudent thing to do. Nor am I crying fair play or complaining about the lack of recognition for rapier. While it's common for many people to think of rapier as a marginalized group, the redheaded stepchild, especially in pocket areas where rapier was slow to develop or is having trouble with the culture, on the larger society, rapier is an accepted, encouraged, and thriving leading community. The argument here is the idea that if a group of people are acting in a peer-like fashion and the people around them want to recognize them for it, there should be a way to do so. Appropriate ward structures create stable sustainability within the area established culture in our game. It is the responsibility of the leaders in society to make it happen. But who are these leaders? Sure, it's the BOD, it's the royal peers, but the beauty of this game is that more important than the BOD and the peers is you. All of you. You people are actually, you people that actually want to recognize your friends, your heroes, the people that inspire you. The heart of this game is those people, that inspiration. We create awards because these people that we recognize that have moved us, inspired us, helped us and improved our beliefs within this society, we create those awards for them. Think about it. Do you know any member of the rapier community that is right now a peer level person and not a peer because they can't be? Maybe you don't, maybe you do. Midroom is actually really good at finding a different way to do it. That's not the same in the game. This is about rapier growing and remaining an integral, sustainable part of the FCA. About continuing the tradition of recognizing martial prowess as a valued skill in the society, no matter what weapon form about having an established and consistent way across the known world of recognizing the people who, were they to focus their efforts anywhere else in society, would be made peers. This is about recognizing our heroes. It is not about making a bunch of new peers. It is about recognizing those many peers who play this game without thought or expectation of advancement because it's not there, who do it purely out of love. Wow, what a person. Think of that person, a person that actually achieves peer level status, status to hit in his or her community without any hope of peer level recognition. You certainly can't accuse that person of chasing the cookie.